Imagine that you want to reach an amount of money by adding up coins of different values. What's the minimum number of coins you can use for that? That's the coin change problem. Also, imagine that you want to climb stairs with a given amount of steps. For that you can perform jumps of different distances. For example, you can jump by 1, 4, 5 or 7 steps. What's the minimum number of jumps to reach the top? That's the climb stairs problem. In this example, we need a minimum of 4 jumps, 2 of distance 7, 1 of distance 5, and 1 of distance 4. Now imagine that you have a given quantity of water that you want to spill in glasses of different capacities. What's the minimum number of glasses you need, knowing that they have to be used at their full capacity? That's the spill water problem. Now what if I tell you that these three problems that seem unrelated, are in reality instances of the same problem. Yes, let me tell you why. Actually, when solving problems, the story behind the problem doesn't really matter. We don't care if we're dealing with coins, water, or jumps. This type of information is in reality here just to imagine a real-life situation of the problem. What matters is the data type of each variable, its range of values, its properties, the constraints of the problem, and what result are we searching for? In our examples, the amount of money, the number of steps, and the amount of water all can be replaced by writing a positive integer s. And the values of coins, the distances of jumps, and the capacities of glasses all can be replaced by saying a set of n positive integers a. Okay, as input you have a positive integer s and a set of positive integers a. What do we want to produce? We want to attribute a value x to each element of the set a. It represents the number of occurrences. How many times do we take it? So it has to be positive. The number of occurrences cannot be below 0. For example with coins, if we have coins of value 1, 4, 5 or 7, these values of x mean that we take 0 coins of value 1, 1 coin of value 4, 1 coin of value 5 and 2 coins of value 7. But, we don't want to assign these values x randomly, we want to minimize their sum, because we want to minimize the number of elements we take, whether coins, jumps, or glasses. While respecting the constraint that the sum of elements we take, multiplied by their number of occurrences, is equal to the integer s. For example with coins, if we sum the product of each coin value and the number of times we took it, we have to exactly get the amount of money we want to make, which is the case here. And thus the mathematical formulation of our problem. Given a positive integer s and a set of n positive integers a, we want to find a set of positive integers x1 to xn that minimizes the sum of values xi while respecting the constraint of having the sum of xi times ai equal to s. Now from this definition, the problem becomes clear. We know what we have and what we're searching for. And this particular problem can be solved with dynamic programming, by having a table that maps each value between 0 and s inclusive to the minimum number of elements to reach it. We keep building it either from top to bottom if we use memoization, or bottom to top if we use tabulation. It's explained more in detail with a full example and implementation, in my dynamic programming course, where we learn about benefits of dynamic programming, its two approaches, memoization and tabulation, and 20 solved problems to practice. You can find the link in description. Anyway, why I'm telling you this? What's the point of this video? From this video, you should understand two things. The first one is that when facing a coding problem, you shouldn't focus too much on the background of the problem the situation where the problem occurred. The important part is understanding the input and the output to have a clear vision of what needs to be done. And the second thing is that a lot of problems are similar or literally identical, and solving a lot of problems will increase your ability to match the new problem to an old problem you solved before. And that's very powerful, you'll have a strong intuition on how to approach a new problem. And that's the answer a lot of competitive programmers will tell you if you ask them about their ability to solve problems quickly. 
They'll ask you to solve a lot of problems to develop intuition. In brief, when you start to solve a problem, focus on the core elements of the problem, regardless of what they represent in the real-life situation, and try to match them with similar problems you've seen before. You'll develop this ability by solving a lot of problems. We've come to the end of this video, I hope that this advice will be beneficial to you, share the video with other people, and see you in the next one.